But first, as it's the 100th edition of the AT Show, I thought it appropriate to take a trip down memory lane with a beautiful blonde. So, thank you. So here, for a romp through the past hundred years of torrid passion, is my residence expert, Julie Peasgood. Romp me through the torrid passion. There have been some radical changes in the last century, Alan, particularly in our attitudes towards marriage, towards same-sex relationships, even a woman's right to enjoy sex. Believe you mean she didn't in 1908? She did, but it was never acknowledged. Unless you were a loose woman or a lady of the night, it was thought that you just laid back and thought of England. Oh, I can think Honestly. of a few women who still do. <laughs> I'm not going any further. <laughs> Less of that later. Back in 1908, okay, um, Dr. John Harvey Kellogg had just invented the nation's favourite breakfast cereal. Are you fond of your cornflakes, Alan? Well, now and again. I'm a porridge man, really, but I don't mind the old corn. Okay. They're all soggy, these. Well, well here's, here's a fresh bowl. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I think yeah, they were the ones I had earlier. Yes. Dr. Kellogg was, in fact, an obsessive celibate. And believe it or not, his cereal was originally marketed as a food to dampen your sexual desire. Truly, to, to control your urges. Because back then, it was considered not only undesirable, but positively dangerous to pleasure yourself. As I'm sure you know, the Victorians believed that you'd go blind, you'd go mad, or you'd grow very hairy palms. <laughs> Wow. Which camera, which camera am I working with? <laughs> no. Nowadays, uh, truly. Sorry. Thankfully, nowadays, of course, it's considered actually healthy for both physical and psychological reasons. And in fact, the sheer speed and stress of our modern lifestyle... I thought you were going to say speed of something else. Well, no. the sheer <laughs> The stress of our Come modern on. lifestyle has taken such a toll on everybody's libidos yes. that there's now a call for products to increase desire, part of the reason why Viagra was invented. Right. Oh, I thought you were going to say something else I could eat. No, it's all, <laughs> it's all so changed. If we move on then to the 20s. The 20s, the 20s saw the rise, so to speak, of the condom. The rise of the, the condom. The rise of the condom. <laughs> um, it's which is hard not to put a double on exactly. top on everything. Very, very, very difficult. Condoms <laughs> stopped being handmade. They became automated. They've been around for three or four, you know, hundreds mm. uh, years. And, uh, they used and all different they things. They used all different things. They used everything from sausage skins to sheep's bladders. People had been improvising. Jurex have sent us some lovely uh, photos of condoms from the 1930s. Mm. I think we've got, huh? a, have we got a picture of those, a photo of the condoms. From do, no, no, they don't. They've perished. They've perished. <laughs> yeah. well, but you see, I mean... They had a very novel way of testing them. If yes. I can just say, here's one I prepared earlier. Yes. They, they had to do this to check that they were strong enough, you see. Oh! Oh, that, oh! See, showing that it was very, very, very strong indeed. Okay. And now they, 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 well, I think we do have a still having of them. We testing, do have a still of uh, testing them. Okay. Yes, they're in sweet. I'm giving it a good so old bend. So I wasn't fibbing. No, you weren't. They were also shrouded in mystery. I mean, a man would get them at the barbers. I'm sure you remember oh, yes. the expression. I do remember when I was a little nipper. Every lad's been in there when the barber has said at the end to an older man who was leaving, anything for the weekend, sir? Exactly. <laughs> Wonderful new All very it? discreet. Nowadays, they're widely displayed and sold everywhere. And, of course, the range is huge. Durex, biggest manufacturers of all, have got ones that are multicolored, flavored, ones with bumps and ridges for increased sensation. And especially for you, Alan, they have got Comfort XL for extra large condoms for the man who's really well endowed. I use them on my cucumbers all the time. They're very good for keeping the green fly off. Yes, that's true. I do. I do. Coming, you said, moving swiftly to on. The There's 60s. another one there. It seems to look like a park <laughs> round here. Uh, the 60s. Now, the 60s saw a sexual revolution. Sex, drugs, rock and roll, the permissive society. 1961, we had uh, the invention of the contraceptive pill. Sex became much safer and easier. Saw the rise of women's lib, the first political sex scandal with Christine mm, Keeler and the perfume affair. 1967, homosexuality was legalised. Uh, previously, it obviously, it had been a criminal so offence. within one decade, then, enormous Everything barriers changed. broken enormous. down. Enormous. Also, you know, what we wore became so different. At the turn of the century, to show an ankle was considered positively pornographic. By the oh. 60s came, we had the mini skirt. Now this. Very <laughs> nice. <laughs> Go on then. Go. No, no. Fine. So yeah, an ankle. And now, I mean, you, you, now you're happy wearing this, are you? Yes, of course. Gemma, you don't. 
you know, you wouldn't show an ankle anymore, would you? It just wouldn't mean anything at all. Definitely you wouldn't get noticed whatsoever, would you? Definitely not. <laughs> do you think it's a good thing that, that fashion's gone the way it has? Definitely, yes. I do. You do? Well, so do men, I think. Really, so do men. Mini Thank skirt, you. hot pants, yeah. it was wonderful, all happening. I was trying to think of some more exciting questions, but <laughs> I was... I really rather lost what to say. Actually, <laughs> lost the power of lost speech. Lost the power of speech, I did. Okay. So we wore that, I mean, the 80s to the present, then again, the quantum leap. What happened in the, in the late 80s and the 90s and the noughties, which we're now in, is that the sex toys came out of the closet, especially vibrators. Obviously, they'd been around before then, but they were always marketed as personal massagers, like this rather sturdy, heavyweight one here. Okay. Anyway. So they came with... <laughs> little diagrams of the joys they could bring to you back in your shoulders. Oh, yes. Things like that. I'm very good, good actually, for pollinating tomatoes. <laughs> because you hold that against the stem and you switch it on like that and it, it's exactly. Exactly. And it vibrates, all the pollen gets dispersed. I never so. knew that. Yeah, no, well, there you are, something new every day. Nice thing, then, teachers. Then, so. When the rabbit hopped onto our screens in Sex and the City, everything changed. Suddenly, erotica was mainstream and summer sex shops on most high mm. streets. And they come, vibrators come in disguises. The Make Me Blush brush. A makeup brush. We've got a tingle tip here, which is a new accessory for your, for your electric toothbrush. Um, Obviously, a, not for about, your gums. What about this little Well, this little bunny here. rabbit from lovehoney.co.uk is very powerful. It packs a real punch, so <laughs> I'm led to believe. Um, and it's very good because, believe it or not, this is the world's first sex toy to have its own page on Facebook. Really? What would Beatrix Potter have said to that? She'd probably say, I wonder where Peter Rabbit's been today. <laughs> <laughs> My thanks to the girl who always raises my temperature, Julie Peasgood. <laughs> I go through it, don't I, as if I know exactly what everything's for. I haven't a clue.